Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So we are looking at single sideband modulation that is SSB and we have talked about uh, <coughs> SSB modulated signals and their comparison uh, with DSB modulation. We have seen that SSB uses half the bandwidth of DSB, alright. So today let us look at the generation of SSB modulated signals, alright. So in this module we want to look at the generation. There are various techniques for the generation of SSB modulation of SSB modulated generation of SSB modulated signals. There are various techniques to generate. SSB modulated signals. Remember SSB stands for single sideband modulation, correct? Single sideband. There are various techniques and in particular the technique that we are going to look at is termed as frequency discrimination. So, the frequency discrimination technique for generation of FS, F, SSB modulated signals, alright. So, the technique, the specific technique that we are going to look at is termed as frequency discrimination. look at frequency discrimination for the generation of SSP modulated signals. And as we have seen yesterday, if we start with a message signal MT, let us say I have my message signal MT which is given by the spectrum between minus FF, FM and plus FM, correct. So, this is your minus FM this is your M FM, this is MF which is spectrum or basically the Fourier transform of message signal of the message signal MT, correct? And FM is the maximum frequency. Right. So, the MSH spectrum MF is between minus FM to FM. Now, first we generate the in frequency discrimination, first we generate the DSB SC that is the double sideband suppressed carrier signal that by modulating with, with the cosine carrier. So, the DSB SC signal which again we have seen is XT equals MT cosine. 2 pi FCT. This is also your DSB SC. This is your DSB SC signal. The double side band suppressed carrier signal and this has the spectrum that comprises of two bands between uh, centered at FC. So, from FC minus FM to FC plus FM to FC. So, band shifted to FC and another band shifted to minus FC. So, we will have and this is the band shifted to minus FC that is minus FC plus 
f m and minus f c minus f m and what we have seen and of course, this is basically this spectrum is the spectrum of x f which is half m f minus f c plus half m f plus f c and what we have seen in this spectrum is that we have two side bands which are symmetric one is the lower side band correct. So, this comprises your L s b equals lower side band and we have the upper side band correct. We have the upper side band which is comprised of the. So, you can also look at this the lower side band as basically the inner bands all right in this d s b s c spectrum the lower side band is basically comprised of the inner bands the upper side band is comprised of the outer bands. So, the lower side band is comprised of the inner side bands and this u s b is the upper side this is comprised of the outer this stands for upper side band and this stand this is basically the outer side bands. And now you can clearly see the inner side bands are separated from the outer side bands in the frequency domain. Hence, we can use filtering to basically extract either the inner side bands or the outer side bands that is basically the lower side band of the spectrum or the upper side band. So, the lower side band so since the LSB comma USB are separated in the frequency domain correct. This implies that filtering or basically frequency discrimination can be employed filtering or frequency discrimination can be employed to extract the LSB or the USB and extract either the lower side band or the upper side band. So, one can use filtering or basically frequency discrimination to extract the LSB or the USB. And specifically how this frequency discrimination is done you can clearly see that if I want to extract the lower side band then I can employ a low pass filter. If I want to extract the upper side band I can employ a high pass filter. So, let us first start with the upper side band. Now, if you look specifically at the upper side band let me redraw the spectrum again if you look specifically at the upper side band so i have this band which is centered at centered at fc correct so i have fc f c plus f m f c minus f m and similarly I have another band which is centered at minus minus f c. So, I have two bands and this is at minus f c minus f c plus f m minus f c minus f m and therefore, now if I want to extract the upper side band I can employ frequency discrimination I can pass this through a high pass filter with cut off frequency at 
with cutoff frequency at f c that is a filter which is 0 from minus f c to f c and it is 1 if. So, if I pass it through a high pass filter let us draw the high pass filter if I do now you can see if I pass it through the high pass filter this is 1 for f greater than or equal to f magnitude of f greater than. So, this is my high pass filter more specifically the spectrum of my high pass filter which is equal to 1 if when f magnitude of f greater than or equal to f c and 0 otherwise I pass it through the high pass filter correct. So, which implies basically the cut off frequency is equal to the high pass filter with cut off frequency equal to f c that is basically it is an ideal high pass filter and realize it is an ideal high pass filter in practice it is very difficult to design such filters, but it is an ideal high pass filter which has uh, gain unity all right for all frequencies greater than or equal to f c and it has gain exactly equal to gain equal to 0 for all frequencies between minus f c to f c. If I pass the DSB SC signal that is x f or the DSB SC signal x t through this then naturally what this gives me is the upper side band and what I can able to extract let me just show this again I pass this through this filter and what I am naturally going to get is x f times. So, if I call this as your x f the output is x f times the h p f uh, uh, which is where it is the spectrum or the Fourier transform of your high pass filter and therefore, what you get is basically it is basically given by. So, you can see you can extract the upper side band. So, this is minus f c. So, this is minus f c minus f m. This is your x f times h the high pass filter which is basically equal to the spectrum of your upper side band signal. And notice that this is an ideal high pass filter which means which means it is exactly 1 it has gained exactly unity for all frequencies greater than f c and it has a sharp cut off at f c and for all frequencies less that is between minus f c to f c the gain is 0. So, it has a very sharp notice that it has a sharp cut off at f c. It has a very sharp cut off it has a very sharp cut off at f c. Okay. So, this is the spectrum. So, this is x f times h of h p f. So, this is a spectrum of the upper side band modulated signal. Now, similarly to generate the L s b for L s b. So, this is basically talks about U s b generation. So, this is basically your U s b this is the generation of the USB signal. Now, that is the upper side band signal. Now, to generate the LSB signal naturally one has to pass it through a to generate upper lower side band naturally one has to pass it through the. So, for the upper side bands that is extracting the outer side bands we have to pass it through the high pass filter to extract the lower side bands naturally one has to pass it through a low pass filter all right. So, pass through the pass through L p f or basically your low pass filter once again I can add 
that we desire an ideal low pass filter. And you can see again, if I have the spectrum that is given as follows, correct? So, this is this is a spectrum XF, FC, correct? This is other band which is from minus F C to F C and now I low pass filter this, pass this through a low pass filter. Again, I choose an ideal low pass filter. Look at this, if the low pass filter is 1 between minus F C that is if I pass it through an ideal low pass filter which is 1 correct between. So, this is my X F all right which is a spectrum of the D S B S C signal. I pass it through this low pass filter which is has a gain of unity for the signal for the range of frequencies between minus F C to F C that is your this is my low pass filter H L P F which is 1. Now, for all frequencies less than or equal to F C between minus F C and F C and 0 otherwise and also again it goes without saying that this what we are considering is an ideal L P F and you can again see that there is a sharp cut off at F C and what this yields is this gives me the lower side bands of this gives me now gives me the lower side band this gives the lower side band and if I have to draw this. So, this is from this is my F C, this is my minus F C, minus F C plus F M, F C minus F M and this you can see is the L S B signal or your this is the lower side band signal correct and uh, what you can also and this spectrum x l s b f therefore it goes without saying that this is x f the d s b s b signal times the spectrum of the ideal low pass filter. So, basically I can use frequency discrimination that is passing it through the high pass filter to generate the upper side band, the ideal high pass filter to generate uh, the upper side band modulated signal and the ideal low pass filter to generate the lower side band modulated signal. This is termed as frequency discrimination. So, what I have over here to draw this schematically, I have my signal. So, to draw a schematic block diagram for USB generation, I have basically your incoming message signal. This is your message signal empty, pass it through a modulator cosine 2 pi F C T and the output pass it through your high pass filter and the high pass filter has the response of unity 
for all frequencies greater than or equal to f c and less than or equal to minus f c and out comes my. So, this at this point is x t, this point is the upper sideband modulated signal. Similarly, for LSB generation, I start once again with the same signal m t. This step is the similar for both LSB and USB. I modulate it with cosine 2 pi f c t to generate x t. Now, at this point pass it through your low pass filter and out comes the LSB lower sideband modulated signal and again it is not difficult to see that the low pass filter has frequency response that is unity for this is your H L P F and this is your H spectrum of the high pass filter. The low pass filter has uh, is basically it is an ideal low pass filter as we have seen that the sharp cutoff with a gain of unity for all frequencies within the range minus f c to f c. And therefore, naturally the question that arises is what happens when these filters are not ideal because in practice it is very difficult to design filters with such sharp cutoffs. So, in practice it is very difficult to design filters with such very difficult to design filters with such sharp cutoffs that is unity for f greater than f c 0 for f less than f c or in the case of low pass filter 0 for f greater than f c and unity for all f between minus f and f c. So, therefore, now that is basically there is no transition band all right there is a pass band and there is a stop band and there is no transit. In practice frequently we have filters which have a transition band. So, we have low pass filters which are not ideal low pass filters, but they have a transition band. So, if this is your f c, so gain of unity, gain of 0 or close to 0 correct and if this is f c correct minus f c. So, there is a band in which it is transitioning from 1 to 0. So, these are your basically transition. So, this is your stop band where it is equal to 0. This is your pass band where it is gain is equal to unity which means these frequencies are passed and these bands where it is transitioning from the stop band to pass band or pass band to all right. So, transitioning from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 these are the transition bands all right. So, ideal filters have a 0 transition band, but practical filters have a finite bandwidth of transition. So, practical filters have finite transition bands. So, practical filters have finite practical filters have finite transition bands and therefore, if you pass for instance for the generation of an LSB signal again let us start with your DSB SC signal correct. So, let us start with your DSB SC signal and you have the band between 
if C and the band at uh, you have the band at minus so you have the band at minus f c this is the band at minus f c and you have a low pass filter which has a transition. So, this is your let us say this is your ideal LPF characteristic, this is your ideal LPF characteristic, then you have an approximate low pass filter which has a finite transition band. So, that looks something like for instance something like this and then again a finite transition band here to transition from let me just draw it. So, these are the finite transition So, this is your finite. So, this is your practical LPF which has a finite transition band. Which means that it is not exactly equal to 0 for all f greater than f c and f less than minus f c, but it is transitioning from 1 to 0 over a finite. So, there is some frequencies less than f c for which the gain is less than 1 unity and is there are some frequencies greater than f c for which the gain is uh, greater than 0. So, it is transitioning from 1 to 0 and naturally if you employ this for low pass filtering what you are going to end up with is not exactly a lower sideband signal, but you will have in this whereas, this was your ideal LPF correct your ideal upper sideband characteristic with an ideal LPF might have looked something like this. So, this is your ideal LSB characteristic. Okay, so, this is your ideal LSB characteristic, but what you will have is so, this is minus f c ok. So, this is your ideal I am sorry this is a lower side band model. So, the ideal LSB characteristic will have looked something like ideal L will have looked something like this, this is your ideal LSB correct. So, look what would have looked ordinarily like this. Now, because of the distort because of the non ideal nature of the LPF, it looks something like this. It looks something like all right. So, there is a part of the band that is a part of the band that is outside F c and outside of that is less than minus f c also also picked up. So, what you have what you will have is uh, something that looks like so something that looks like some characteristic that looks like this where there is some part of the band less than minus f c part of the band outside. So, what you have is parts of bands less than minus f c and that is part 
of bands less than minus f c and greater than and greater than f c and these parts these small parts that are picked up because of the non ideal nature these are termed as vestiges these are termed as vestiges there is a term for this these are termed as vestiges that is these are the parts small bands of the dsbsc signal that are picked up because of the non ideal nature of the low pass filter that is because there is a transition band which is not exactly so therefore the lpf characteristic is not exactly zero for all f greater than equal to fc or all f greater than fc and all f less than minus fc but there is a small band around fc for which it is transitioning from 1 to 0 so that picks up vestiges of the original spectrum vestiges are basically small portions of the spectrum vestige basically means a small portion so it picks this picks up vestiges of the original spectrum which are greater than fc and less than minus fc these are termed as vestiges and we will later see a modulation scheme all right which employs these vestiges which is termed as vestigial sideband modulation all right and so vestigial sideband modulation is especially suited for such scenarios so we have vestiges and we have we will see a scheme which is termed as vestigial vestigial sideband modulation specifically for such scenarios where it is difficult to design ideal low pass filters and for the same token high pass filter when you have a non ideal high pass filter which is a small transition band where it's transitioning from 0 to less than fc to 1 greater than fc all right so it picks up vestiges when you pass it through what if you pass it through an ideal high pass filter we are some we get an ideal upper sideband modulated signal but when you pass it through a non ideal or a practical high pass filter it picks up vestiges of the original dsbsc spectrum corresponding to uh, components corresponding frequencies between minus fc and that is small vestiges of the original signal which would have not been otherwise present had the filter been an ideal high pass filter all right so therefore to deal with it all right we have a different modulation scheme to vestigial sideband modulation which we are going to explore later all right so this is one scheme and there is another scheme which we'll cover later that is uh, uh, by basically using the hilbert transform or basically the phase shifting method to generate an ssb modulated signal so there are different techniques to deal with it that is this non ideal nature of the filter since it's very difficult so practical filters always have a finite transition band so the different techniques are to use either a phase shifting mechanism which we will discuss subsequently and also vestigial sideband modulation which handles these vestiges of the original spectrum that are retained by non ideal filters all right so in this module we have specifically looked at the generation of ssp signals using frequency dis discrimination both upper sideband modulated and lower sideband modulated signals using uh, ideal high pass and low pass filters respectively and we have also seen the schematics and what happens when you have practical filters when with finite transition bands. So, let us stop here and we will continue in the subsequent module. Thank you.